Well, hello there, and welcome to this episode of The Terry Cole Show that I want to start with a question. Do you ever see happy couples on the street or in movies or on television and think, what do they know that I don't know? Do you ever look at other people and think that they have it all figured out and you're not actually sure how to figure it out yourself? Well, if you're nodding your head, yes. Whether you're in a relationship or not, this episode is for you because in this episode, I'm actually going to be sharing with you my own personal top 20 tips for curating, creating, attracting epic love in your life. So this is literally for everyone. Before we get started, if you happen to be new to my YouTube channel, please make sure that you subscribe and hit that little bell so that you get notified every time I roll out something new, which is every Tuesday and every Thursday. And I wouldn't want you to miss a thing since you are the one I'm creating it for. Um, Thank you so much for all your questions and your comments. I love to highlight them. So under the video, Seven Strategies to Stop Being So Defensive, this is from Keuchi1111. Thank you for all the work you're doing. It is helping me so much to unravel my life and has been integral in helping me find myself for the first time in my life, which in turn is helping me become a better daughter, sister, mother, and overall person. You are so appreciated. Well, thank you, Keuchi1111. I am super appreciative of you and that you have actually taken the time to write that comment. It really does mean the world to me, you guys. All right, let's move it on into today's episode. So top 20 things that you got to do in a healthy relationship. And these things came to me um, over years of being in a good marriage, of being in a healthy relationship, but also of being a psychotherapist for 25 years, just seeing people in the trenches, in the relationships, and really being able to identify what doesn't work, right? What scratches away at the foundation of relationships? So I'm going to go through these, but I want you to think about, and a lot of it, we're going to be talking about the opposite. So what we're really talking about, we can call it epic love. We can call it real love. What I'm really interested in, you guys, all the time, though, is healthy love. That's what I want because healthy love is also sustainable love, but it's love that is safe. It's love that feels good. So the first thing is mutual respect. There has to be mutual respect. That's it. So if anyone in the union is acting disrespectful to the other, that is a problem that has to be addressed. It's absolutely necessary for there to be mutual respect because we can't create a safe and sacred place if there isn't. All right, number two, communicate honestly and authentically. So honest communication itself, this uplevels the intimacy in the relationship, right? Regardless of what you did or didn't learn growing up, here's the thing about healthy communication. Luckily, for all of us, it's like a language that we can learn. And I'm super into teaching you all about it. I'm actually, at the end of this month, I'm doing my Real Love Revolution course, which a lot of that course is about healthy communication in love. So if that's interesting to you, go to terrycole.com forward slash RLR. Don't worry, all the notes will be in the show notes. So we are communicating honestly and authentically. And it doesn't matter if nobody taught you how to do it, because I promise you can learn how to do it. All right, number three is liking the other person. I see this in my therapy practice where there's this tendency to like find flaws, you know, and I'm going to get to that. That, that, that's a later number, but, or to just be annoyed with things about the other person. So I want you to really think back if you're in a relationship right now, what drew you to your partner to, to begin with, right? What was it? Remember, what do you like about your partner? I mean, when I was madly, I'm still madly in love with Vic, but in the beginning, when I was out of my mind, He was traveling to Paris with the kids, and I was traveling to Tuscany with some friends. And I remember writing him a 40-page letter by hand. Keep in mind, you guys, this was like the late 90s. Nobody was texting anybody, just FYI. And I remember just writing, I love that you only wear t-shirts and jeans. I love how soft your skin is. I love how you smell. I love, I love, I love, I love. There were so many things. And still are so many things. And when he can get on my nerves, because 25 years later, of course he can, just like I can get on his. 
I always think about that list and think about how I liked so much about Vic then, and I still do, that I wrote a 40-page letter when I was in Tuscany. I really wanted to be in Elizabeth, New Jersey with him rather than in Tuscany. Dude, now if that isn't love, I don't know what the hell is. But it's curating and remembering and reminding yourself about the things that you really like about the person because you can love someone and not like them. And that is a really long prisoner type relationship to be in. So I always work to focus on the things that I like about Vic. This is a valuable practice and it's a muscle that you can actually flex. All right, number four, create a flexible shared couple's vision of how you want to live, how you want to spend your time, how you want to spend your money. And all of this will be in the guide, terrycole.com forward slash guide. Don't worry, I'll walk you through. But a couple's vision is basically consists of sitting down and talking about what you both want in the next year, the next two years, right? Where do we want to live? How do we want to spend any surplus money if we have any? How much do we want to be working? How do we want to spend our leisure time? So, I mean, and you know, you guys will come up with your own questions that are important to you. And I used to, when I used to do couples counseling, I would sort of walk couples through the process. You have to do this at least once a year because people change, right? You change, you grow. I change, I grow. This is how it is. And you know, when when Vic and I were, you know, doing a couple's vision one year, we started thinking about moving out of New Jersey and moving to the country. Now, obviously that was 20 years ago, but you know, we really had to talk about it because it was not something that we had planned necessarily. We ended up buying a little lake house and like loving it. And that's where both of my parents are from. But it took these conversations of figuring out the planning. When are we going to do it? When does it make sense? What has to happen for us to be able to afford to do it? And then we have to put the house for sale in New Jersey and all of the things. But that it, none of those decisions, and those are big life decisions, could be made without really having a, a conversation and really getting into how you feel about it, how I feel about it, which of course we do. And we do a couple's vision every single year. And I can't tell you how often things change. You know, for the pandemic, when we had our meeting during the pandemic, he was like, I would like to change something about the couple vision. I really want to get chickens and geese. And that was not on our sort of agreed upon plan. But I was like, okay, sure, fine. Like, I'm, I'm happy if you want to do it and be the primary caretaker of those animals, um, which he is. But that changed our lives as well, right? Because now there's more to stay home for and more to take care of. But it brings him so much joy and it was important to him. But again, that changed our couple vision. We needed to talk about it. Number five, do not give unasked for advice or criticism. It's such a communication blocker. If you're an auto advice giver, please try not to. You know, and in more of a, like, let's say a heterosexual relationship and probably other relationships as well. One, most people just want to be heard, right? I know in my therapy practice, women want to be heard. And from a stereotypical standpoint, what I've seen and in my experience, men have a tendency to want to fix what they think is broken. And that's usually not very satisfying for the person who just wants to be heard. So holding space for each other to vent and get specific about what you need, right? The magic question is, how can I best support you right now? Vic will ask me, are we brainstorming? You just want to vent? What are we doing right now? Let me know. That is super helpful. How can I best support you right now? Can look like, want to make out? Can look like, would you make me a cup of tea? Would you just snuggle with me on the couch? Because here's the thing. If we don't tell each other what we need, if we don't ask the question, how can I best support you? then you're both guessing and getting it wrong because we're always projecting like, what I would want in this situation is this, so that's what I'm going to do. But you're different people, right? So usually what you want may not be what your partner wants. Number six, value what the other person wants for themselves and be a part of their solution to getting it. And I think that this can be really challenging when we have ideas about what our person should be doing. By the time I got into a relationship with Vic, I was way less codependent than I had been in previous relationships because we didn't get together until I was in my 30s and he was in his 40s. And it's like really realizing that 
The most important thing is what this guy wants for himself. What is important, right? It can't only be how it will impact me. Even though, of course, I think about it, you know, how will it impact me? Some of you know my husband is a visual journalist, so he goes and gets embedded with the military, sometimes in active war zones. You know, maybe not my most favorite thing that he does. But as I would, t- I told the kids at the time when he first was getting embedded and the kids were more teenagers, you know, they were like, how could you let dad go to a war zone? And I'm like, I don't own dad. <laughs> like, I love dad. Trust me, dad is definitely my person and my priority, but I don't own him. And, and really, he has the right to do what feels right to him, you know? I mean, and Vic also was coming to me for, like, permission to a degree when he first was invited to be embedded. He's like, oh, I told him I couldn't do it. I was like, why? Well, because we just came back from vacation and blah, blah, blah. He had his reasons. And I was like, listen, I'm not going to beg you to get embedded in a friggin' active war zone. But if you're asking me if I'm okay with it, and you're telling me it's a lifelong dream of yours, then yeah, I'm okay with it. Because who am I to stand in the way of his lifelong dream? You know what I mean? Anyway, so you want to value what the person wants for themselves and hopefully be a part or be supportive of them getting it. Number seven is pretty obvious. Avoid ownership, jealousy, and punishing behavior. Being punishing is so damaging to a relationship. So you don't need to express yourself by punishing your person. Use your words instead of acting out because therapeutically, as I like to say, we're only going to talk it out or act it out. Those are literally our two choices in life. So I am here to tell you that talking it out is way better than acting it out because acting it out just does damage all around. And there's no resolution usually when we're acting it out. And jealousy is another thing. This is an indication of insecurity. As I said before, you don't own your partner and they don't own you. It's an honor and a privilege to find someone that you want to partner with in this life. And I think it's okay to talk about feeling insecure or feeling jealous or ask for reassurance if you're in that situation. All right, number eight, become an active and expert listener or an athletic listener, as I like to call it. So really, there's something so joyful about being able to ask expansive questions. When your person is talking, I love to ask Vic, well, then what happened? And then what'd they say? And then how'd you feel? And then what'd you do? Like, I want him to know when he's telling me something important that he fully has my attention, but he also has the floor. Meaning, I'm not looking to turn that shit around to have it be on me immediately because he also, when it's my turn to share something, is present and asks questions, and makes an observation, and he's not looking to turn it around and bring it back to him. And part of that is because we both honor the other one when they're talking. And I think that I don't think I was good at this when I was in my 20s. I think that I was very much a wait to talker because I thought I was making a connection with the person by being like, oh my gosh, me too. Right. That happened to me or something similar. I swear I didn't think that I was being sort of self-centered or self-absorbed, but that, and that wasn't my intention, but it doesn't matter. Because if someone is trying to tell you a story and you are quickly turning it around to bringing it back to you, that is not going to have that person feel very understood or validated. So, and, and don't worry, I've got questions for you in the guide, terrycole.com forward slash guide. Number nine, be willing to take responsibility for your mental and physical health because lack of it affects the other person profoundly. So we had agreements for sure about that before Vic and I got together. I was like, you're already 10 years older than me. So you have got to be on your health, on it. Stay healthy, work out, go to the gym, stay flexible, work out with a trainer if you need to, whatever the thing is. And he does. He does. He has taken that to heart. And if he is slacking with that, I always say, hey, we had an agreement. And he knows. I don't want him to die. I don't want him to get sick. I want him to be well enough to do all the things that we do. It's very important to me, but it also can't be my responsibility. All right, number 10, have fun and have sex. So having fun, do things silly, unproductive, go for adventures, take rides together. Also prioritize having sex. This is find a way to stay sexually interested in each other. I've been doing this for 25 years. 
And I, I keep in mind, I prioritize being physical with Vic, affectionate, yes, and sexual, because it is important to the relationship and to keeping the relationship good. This connection is the difference between sort of being best friends and being in a, in a romantic relationship. And I know that there are many different now incarnations or romantic relationships can be organized and have no sex in them. But if it's a relationship that started with sex, and it's something that's important, especially to one of you, you need to be on the same page, right? If you're on the same page where you're like, we're no longer having sex and we're both fine with it, fine. That, that can be an agreement too. I find in my own relationship that it's important to prioritize a physical life together, and we both prioritize it. So whatever the agreement is between you, though, because it doesn't have to be have sex, because I think that there are a lot of relationships where people are more asexual now, and that's okay, too, as long as you're both on the same page with it. All right, number 11, try not to interrupt, even if your partner is telling the story all wrong. That's it. Try not to interrupt, right? Whether they're telling you something or whether you're out, just accept that you're two different people. And I laugh about this because I always want so badly to be like, that's not how it happened um, <laughs> when Vic is telling a story. Or I don't understand why he's not making it funnier because there's so many ways to make it funny. But I really bite my tongue because it's none of my damn business if he's telling a story. I need to leave him alone and let him tell the story. <laughs> Number 12, be flexible as much as possible and spontaneous at least some of the time. I think that is self-explanatory. It happens in life. Sometimes things don't work out, but instead of blaming each other, try to have an adventures with the small things that go wrong. Maybe you won't come back to eat at this place for lunch, but don't focus on the fact that the food wasn't great. Focus on the fact that you guys were together. Step outside of your box. Have fun. Have adventures. Number 13, Admit your mistakes promptly and apologize often. Number 14, be polite and say please and thank you. I want to say always. And I know some people think this is weird. Like, why do I need to be so polite with my person? Well, my two cents on the why is because it's so damn easy to take them for granted. And you know who doesn't work for you? I mean, unless they do, is your person. You know who doesn't work for me? Vic. He does not work for me. So every kindness that he extends me, which is massive on a daily basis, is a gift. He makes the bed. He unloads the dishwasher. I do the same. And whoever does it, the other person says, oh, thanks for doing the laundry. Thanks for putting it away. Thanks for folding all of that stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that really does add a whole bunch of deposits in the well of goodwill, as I like to say, when you do that. Right. It's so important. When you have this reserve of goodwill, that gets you through. When the shit hits the fan, that will really get you through the hard times. So treat each other with kindness because this shit is voluntary, people. Like even when you're married, right? Like we choose it every day and some people can unchoose it. So realize that this is voluntary for both of you. Number 15, focus on what's right about your other person rather than what's wrong as I was kind of saying at the top. You know, it's so easy to constantly be thinking about the shit they do wrong or the things that are not great. But how about point out what they do right and all the ways that they make your life easier, hopefully they do, or that they contribute value. 16, accept the other person's shortcomings to the best of your ability and empathize with their pain even if you don't understand it. You don't have to understand it. If your person's in pain, you have to care. If I'm in pain, Vic has to care, even if he doesn't get it at all. I don't need him to get it. You don't have to get it. What you have to care about is that I'm in pain and you need to want to be a part of my solution. That's what makes you feel loved, is when the other person is like, what can I do? Number 17, celebrate everything. Life is short and fleeting. Celebrate love. Celebrate all the things, all of them. Make up reasons to celebrate, please. 18, be generous with physical and verbal affection. It's so important, right? Appreciate a nice butt and a pair of jeans. Hold hands, wink, smile, flirt. Being affectionate keeps you close. So don't let it fall by the wayside. And if it has, bring it on back. It's time to bring it on back. Number 19, do things simply because it will make the other person happy. You don't have to want to do it. I do a lot of things I don't want to do. So does Vic. 
and so does any person in a relationship that lasts. And I do it with joy. I've told this before, you, my long-term listeners, like, God, she's boring. But it's true. Vic loves classical music. I've seen billions of hours of live classical music in my life. And I go because he loves it. And I don't love it, but I really love him. And I'm really interested in him doing things that are stimulating and interesting to him. And so that means going. And I make my sister and my brother-in-law come, and we'll go to dinner first. And I love it because he loves it. So I do it because I love him, you know? And he does so much for me that he doesn't want to do that he because he loves me. But you got to do it with generosity. You can't do it and be bean counting because that doesn't work. All right, number 20. Remember that life is fragile, so don't go to bed mad. I know other people have all kinds of different things. Listen, I've been a therapist for 25 years, and I promise you that going to bed mad is probably not great for your relationship. I'm not saying force it. I just mean, don't be petty, right? People die. It happens. Will you be glad that you went to bed mad if your person was abducted in the middle of the night? You won't be. So you're not guaranteed anything. In this life, you're not. Be mindful that every moment you have in this life is a gift. Value it. Value it. All right, you guys, that's my 20. That's my 20 things. I want to know what you think about it. What did I miss? What should I have added? What would you add differently? If you're interested in joining us for Real Love Revolution, you want to hang out with me for three months and dive into all things love and heart-centered everything, and communication, and boundaries, and sex, and all the things, and understanding deeply why you are the way you are when it comes to love, whether you're single or single or partnered. This course is for you. We are starting on January 24th, terrycole.com forward slash RLR. That is where you can check it out. So let me know your thoughts, and as always, take care of you.